Um, I guess that's actually recording now. So we're having our virtual potluck discussion. Of course, potlucks are a way that we often get together in our society um, to gather around food and fellowship, and that's really what we're doing here. So if you're having lunch, as John was having lunch, then no worries about that. Just um, eat and comment as you can. But um, what we wanted to talk to today is, first of all, again, to give you all an opportunity to get to know each other a little better. Um, we want to explore some ways to make our online meetings a little more human. I think that um, for some of us, we're going to be having online meetings for a while. And so we have been trying to look for pointers on how to do that well. And so we'll just very quickly share those because we want to have you all actually spending more time talking than we are. Um, but then we want you to dish up your questions to us. And a helpful way to do that is for you to put this, the questions that you wanted to discuss, especially if you've come with a question, a specific question today that you want to talk about as this group, then put that question in the chat box. And Jacqueline is going to be mon helping monitor the chat, bo chat box, and she's also going to be taking notes in the chat box so that we can download those notes after this meeting and get them out to everybody if we have things that we need to share that way. And then we also want to take a few minutes um, toward the end to determine whether the COVID-19 crisis has created any specific new training needs for you all as, um, as affiliate community foundations. And so, um, so we can touch base about that. But first, because this is a potluck, let's have a little bit of food and fellowship and some getting to know each other. And so um, this is really just for fun. Um, if somebody could share your favorite potluck food, or if you don't do potlucks and you have a comfort food with this group, what would that food be? And is there a specific memory or other reason that it is your favorite food? And I can start <laughs> because you can see what I have behind me, if you can't tell, is a big old bowl of chicken and dumplings. And I have loved those since I was knee high. Um, my mom's foster mother, who lived in the panhandle of Florida, near actually near Elby, Alabama, Elba, but they called it Elby, um, used to make the best chicken and dumplings. And so um, I, and I, sometimes we had them at home too, but they never would match up to Miss Stewart's chicken and dumplings. Um, and, um, you know, of course, we went to church, Baptist church, when I was a kid. My daddy was a deacon. We were there every time the doors opened. And when we had, had homecoming, there were always these many, many different varieties of chicken and dumplings because everybody has their own recipe. And so I would go to church potlucks and have, have all, as all the chicken and dumplings I could eat. <clears throat> Donna, are you an advocate of boil them dumplings hard or, uh, or are you... Uh... I boil them dumplings hard. <laughs> yeah, that's what I've heard. I read some article that was talking about uh, Cracker Barrel, and and they had this lady, and she was making the dumplings, <laughs> and she criticized like the parent of the company, saying, uh, "You really need to boil those dumplings harder than that." <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got to get them cooked through, and you got to get them done on the outside enough that they're not just squishy and icky. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So who See, else has a? I've seen many a potluck come to fisticuffs over the dumpling question. So, yes, yeah. <laughs> do you roll them or do you drop them? Right, yep. exactly. Yep. Ooh, yep. Slick or puffy, you know. I don't oh, know. Yeah. Food color or no food color. Oh, I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. oh, I just. I'll just show that I saw this uh, like uh, hack, okay, that you could make dumplings and you take flour tortillas and you cut them up and you drop them into the boiling and all this other stuff. And I made the mistake of taking those to my in-laws for a meal, you know, when a neighbor had dropped off some homemade dumplings. So here are my tortilla <laughs> dumplings next to this homemade yellow across the top. It has so much butter in it. <laughs> you know, and I, I was just like, okie dokie, we won't do that anymore. That one just doesn't even come close. <laughs> so. Well, I always get roped into bringing the ham, mm -hmm. and I don't even like ham. Oh, no. <laughs> but I made the mistake once of doing this, like, overnight, slow cook, big whole ham thing once when I was feeling really froggy you know, 20 years ago and took it. And now every time there's a potluck, Jerry's got to bring the ham. <laughs> 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 yeah. 
you know, the salty, big hawk of a ham. Yes. But it's very potlucky, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah, it <laughs> certainly is. <laughs> My favorite, though, is all the pretty salads that come to potluck. Oh, yeah. You know, somebody's on. And then, of course, dessert. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's the only time you get the whole array of the homemade dessert table from all the church ladies. So. That's right. Yeah, I'm kind of a dessert person. I always do like a chocolate chest pie, and that seems mm. to be. Oh, those are good. Yeah, you know, and th that's, you know, I have that down to an art now. Just <laughs> whip it up, put it in the oven, and it's ready to go. 35 minutes. <laughs> no calories, Kathy. Right. <laughs> that's the best thing about potlucks. No calories. No calories. Yeah. <laughs> Especially this particular potluck. Right, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, I'm eating soup, so I'm having my soup. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> well, exactly. y'all, I'm not, I'm not a very good cook, okay? I mean, uh -huh. I'm, seriously, that, that's not one of our spiritual gifts, all right? And, um, and so anyhow, but when, but I, you know, you just can't go to a potluck and not bring anything. So you have, you know, I mean, you've got to bring something. Well, I discovered that you can, in the slow cooker overnight, you can, uh, make baked apples you know where you like cut the apples up and you put it in there with sugar and brown sugar and cinnamon and all this other stuff and you leave it on all night while you sleep and if you take the crock pot in with well anyhow that is now my signature dish the only one that i'm capable of doing without ruining um and uh and most of the time i do not come home with any which is the I mean, is there any greater insult than to be the person who has to bring home food from the church? Right. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so, right. Yeah. yeah, there's that. <laughs> yeah. Jacqueline, you're quite the cook. Is there a specific thing that you... You know, um, I was thinking about church potlucks growing up. My favorite was always the soup ones where they would have a variety of soups. And my mom used to make this pizza soup, which is totally not healthy, but it had like marinara sauce and pepperoni in it. And it was, it's really bizarre, but it was really good. Um, so, and I agree with Kathy about the dessert table and getting all those, all the church lady desserts. Um, that's also one of my favorite parts. Mm -hmm. John or Emily, you got anything? Well, I was just thinking, it makes you think you're a mother way back. Mom made a wonderful pot roast, which Jean has made. Jean makes a really good curry chicken, although we haven't had it in a long time. I was just thinking, I don't know about you all, I was, my lunch today, I was finishing up. We've been getting some of these Blue Apron and Hello Fresh things that they deliver. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and they're kind of fun. It's a little activity, and they're usually too the meals usually too much for one dinner last night i think they were orange glazed meatballs um and some veggies so those have been fun they're not mm -hmm. they're, don't go back years they're a little pricey but it's it's kind of fun to do them and you're making some sauces they're not really lose weight meals but they're very good it's amazing how good the quality is when they ship them from various places around the country. Yeah. So that's kind of fun. That's good. Um, mine would be chicken salad, just mm. because I like every variation that I've ever tried of chicken salad, and mm. everybody always has their own. So I like to sing. Yep. That's my favorite one to try how other people make it. <laughs> Emily, are you a pro grapes in the chicken salad or an anti grape <laughs> in the chicken salad? Pro. pro. Ah. <laughs> You're some of those controversial questions today, Sandy. <laughs> oh, I know. It's like, you know. Oh. Yeah, it's, it's amazing how we can uh, find so much variation in food and uh, the way people prepare it. Celery, no celery, grapes, no great nuts. That's right. Mm -hmm. yeah. I like it all in my chicken salad, too, though. <laughs> so, well, thank you all for sharing those potluck memories and um, if anybody has recipes you want to pass along, feel free to do that. <laughs> so um, this and this, I'm going to stop talking after we go through this slide, but um, wanted to share with you all in case it's helpful for some of your own um, meetings that you're having online, some of the, the special sauce that we have come up with from looking at various uh, 
research um, articles and things like that online about how to do online gatherings and make them feel a little more personal to people. And so first of all, this issue, this idea of personal check-ins are really important. Um, when we're online for meetings, we don't get a chance to, you know, go on a break and meet in the hallway and chat around the snack table or, you know, run into each other coming in and out of the bathroom or whatever and have those conversations. And so making intentional space for those conversations is something that we're going to try to do um, with our meetings going forward as much as we can. Um, small groups. It's very difficult sometimes. This group size is quite manageable to have that kind of conversation that we just had. But um, small groups encourage deeper discussion and so i've actually been on a couple of calls where we had you know 50 people um on a call and it's just impossible you're in listening mode the whole time and there's no way to interact and so um you know going forward we're going to look at using breakout rooms this particular article that we got this from said actually if you want to have any kind of deep discussion you shouldn't have groups any bigger than four so um you know uh just to keep in mind of how deep your discussions need to be um, and, uh, you know, um, and plan accordingly. This whole idea of cultivating community, um, you can have virtual happy hours <laughs> or potlucks. We figured it was a little early for a happy hour, so. Um, just don't hit record for those. That's right, just don't hit record <laughs> for those, right. Um, um, having video on, and this is where um, knowing how to expand your screen out if you're actually on a computer. Um, the video provides this body language, additional communication through body language. Um, this is also where the digital divide can, can be a problem for us, I think, in our region because some people really seriously cannot use video on Zoom calls because their internet access is not good enough. Um, Y'all saw my note. My internet is telling me like every two minutes, your internet connection is unstable. Mm -hmm. And I've lost several Zoom calls in the past mm -hmm. few weeks. Yeah. Um, right in the middle of something and then I just go out. Mm -hmm. I live in busy. <laughs> so, you know, it's hard sometimes to, to have patience when that keeps happening too. When people drop off or you're having to say, well, you kind of cut out. Can you say again what you're, what you have to say? And so, um, yeah, it's it's one of the downsides, I guess, of having the um, having to do all this this way. But uh, but just knowing that video provides that body language communication again, it's a way to help things um, be more human. And then if you do have that video on, um, you know, whenever we do webinars or trainings, we're telling people mute your sound because of all the possible background background distractions and things. But we um, also read mute your sound but you don't have to mute your reactions so if you are nodding you know to do to do it now I look like i'm really swimming in my dumplings but <laughs> i mean really super exaggerate or this or um someone had suggested that if you really are in favor of something you use the american sign language for applause which is this and so, you know, you can go, yay, basically. Um, the whole thumbs up, thumbs sideways, thumbs down. So that thumbs up if I'm really agreeing with something, thumbs sideways if I'm just not sure, thumbs down if absolutely no. So that you can get a quick visual if you're able to expand your grid out the way we have these expanded, if you were able to do that expansion of the grid of the, um, the photos of people or the videos of people then you can kind of get some sense of how the group is, is feeling and doing. And then just being self-aware of your communication. Um, and uh, that is what you're communicating through the way you look, especially if your video is on. So, you know, are you slunching um, and looking disinterested? Are you really trying to make eye contact with people, which is kind of interesting when you're trying to do that with eight people at a time. But, you know, just being aware of what your posture is communicating and that kind of thing if you're on video. And then, this is the last thing, speaking succinctly to allow room for others to talk on these meetings. Because I think particularly for people who are either not used to the technology or who may be introverted, to be able to jump in and talk um, in a situation that may not feel comfortable is difficult. So. Um, so allowing space for that by speaking succinctly and also just having people to facilitate conversations is helpful. So those are the things that we um, 
our learning as we're going forward with this because we've been in learning mode and we hope they were helpful to you all. So. And now we'll have you dish them up or, or do people have comments about what we just talked about? We'll do that first actually. Any thoughts about that or lessons that you've learned through your own video conferencing that you want to share? So if you're using Zoom and the breakout rooms, does that have to be a paid Zoom account or an, ex, you know, an up, there's an upcharge for that? Because I don't think I've ever seen that, you know, when I'm, uh, uh, you know, in putting the, the Zoom request. Mm -hmm. um, Jacqueline, can you speak to that? Jacqueline's really, actually, I keep leaning on her for most of our Zoom technology. So, um, do you I mean, know all this is, that? Zoom's all new. And I know last night my, computer updated, you know, I had an update and it was yeah. doing a few things. And uh, so I just didn't know because I never did see where you could do breakout rooms. So I have no idea how to do that. My impression is that it is something that you have to check when you're sitting at the call. Um, so it's one of those options. And it is, um, if you have deeper in your settings on your Zoom account that you don't allow for breakout rooms, it won't show up when you're setting up a call. Uh, okay. um, but that's something I can look into deeper because Brushy Fort does have a pro account through the Braid College. So I'm not, I'm not sure if that's something that is only for the pro account, but I think that all accounts can utilize them. But I will double check that. So okay. I didn't know if it was like a, you know, a different levels of, of mm -hmm. uh, Zoom accounts that you could use. Yeah, I know there are some restrictions for a pro account and a free account in terms of the number of people you can have on and the length of time they can be on, but I don't, yeah. So Jacqueline will research about the, um, and, the chat room. Thing. And we have, the foundation has a paid account and we are happy to share that with the affiliate boards. Mm -hmm. If you need to use a Zoom, a paid Zoom account, you, are, you can contact Kathy or I and we will share that, that um, login with you so you can use it. To, to host your meetings? Um, I was on one last week with breakout rooms. It was not a Zoom platform. It was another platform that I can't recall what it was, but they did the breakout rooms. And for that particular platform, it took, uh, you had to have a facilitator who was taking everybody who was on the call, divided them up into what rooms they wanted them in, and then they pushed a button and put everybody into the breakout room. So that's another consideration if you are having a meeting and you're doing, you know, you're monitoring the minutes and you are also, um, you know, controlling the group, facilitating the group, and if you have to do that as well. Mm -hmm. It gives the facilitator a lot of control. Um, Yeah, and I think when we've used breakout rooms on Zoom, we've had to, we send people to the breakout rooms when the time comes yeah. as well. So yeah. um, that again, that's my guru Jacqueline in the background doing all that stuff. <laughs> Last time I looked, it was for a personal event. It was forty minutes free. Mm -hmm. I think that was a one-time deal. Otherwise, it was fifteen dollars a month. And one of our friends said they thought every, it was going to be free for everybody, but I don't think they've ever gone, Zoom has ever gone to that. But it's nice to know that you'd share, Jack, Jerry. Um, although here, most of the time, somebody in the group has access to a commercial account. I think there's two others, WebEx. I was on with a large group that did WebEx the other day. I never used that one. And God, you can do Skype for free. Mm -hmm. A little tricky, I think. I still can. And I did a join me the other day, and I didn't. I didn't care much for that one. So Which one? It was join me. I think it was called. Oh. And um, it was. It wasn't as easy to use. So far, of all the ones I've been in, Zoom is is the is the most user friendly. Yay. Yay. I agree. Yay. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Isn't this a great thing that the hands up, the yeah. applause yeah, yeah. It really does. I, I love that. And I so, don't think I even knew about Zoom until Sandy. Sandy, I think, was the one that introduced it to me. And uh, she said, oh, it's better than Skype, I think, is what she said. It's easier to use than Skype. And uh, yeah. she's right. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, we had to we had to add it because I mean, being a regional uh, affiliate means that, you know, sometimes we just 
folks don't have the 40 minutes to drive into a meeting and back. And so if they can zoom in, uh, we capture them uh, better. Uh, John, you're Floyd County, right? You're the Pardon? Floyd Okay, I just wanted to double check. I couldn't remember if you were Floyd, Floyd or Pike and uh, and I figured if I guessed wrong, I might hurt your feelings. <laughs> so. No, you wouldn't hurt my feelings, but Kathy's Floyd also, so we have a Okay, engine. okay. So, I don't think sure. anybody, I think Pikeville, I think they emailed back, they've got their grants due today for their downtown, so they were really busy, she said sure. they couldn't do it today. Yeah, this was kind of a last minute thing for us. So welcome, Melissa. Melissa's just joined us. Um, Vermillion? Melissa Vermillion, sorry, yes. Okay. Uh -huh. um, if we if we don't have the shared screen with the PowerPoint, do you think we can get more than six people at a time to see? Because all I'm getting is six. I'm no longer seeing Emily and I'm no longer seeing Melissa. Um, so what I do is I drag the box and make it bigger and more people okay. pull up. So you should be able to grab There's the bottom corner of it and pull it. Or there's a line in between oh. the, if you hover between the screenshot and the the people you can shrink the shared screen oh okay yeah. so can you all <laughs> i learned hey, that again, okay yeah. where do you hover how do you uh, awesome hover? john needs help guys he's saying where to hover so there is there a space and i'm not seeing what you all are seeing actually there's a there's a, a right between your people and the powerpoint kind of hover around in there until a line pops up that you with an arrow that you can move to the left okay and then you and then move it to the left if you're using a mouse click on it and move to the left or if you're using a laptop. Well, you're move, I've got you moving up and down, but I don't have a lot of other. Things. It should move. It should make the screen, the PowerPoint bigger or smaller. If you move it to the left, it's smaller and you get more pictures of people. Well, I've got you now, but where's everybody else? What happened? Oh, um, to the you top. might be in speaker view, you, John. You? Huh? I got Sandy. Yeah, I think you're in speaker view. So in the top left corner or the top right corner of your screen, you should see um, this. When you hover over it, it says grid view, but it has like nine little boxes instead of um, just one solid box. I don't know if I'm explaining that very well, but right, if you look that, that is the grid view. And then you'll be able to do what Jerry's saying to expand the view. Can you see my screen now with all the people on it, Jacqueline? Or is no, I think oh, okay. that everybody is as individual yeah okay i just wanted to see because i was going to show him where the grid view was but so if you it, it looks like a little you know brady bunch grid. it does look like brady bunch yes. yeah that's a good analogy yeah. we're not at the brady bunch now right we just <laughs> one at a time oh okay yeah it's uh, there's a little icon that uh I don't know. It kind of looks like a tic-tac-toe board too. You could say. Do you ha are your people across the top, John? Or are you just seeing one um, person? Now I've got. I now I've got that. Uh, I've got everybody in, or six of us. And so at the bottom of that little black box, pull that down. You can make you can make it longer. At the very, if you hover down there, drag it down. Okay. Okay. And it should make room for more pictures. I mean, if you had yep. 50 people, you couldn't. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. But for this number, you could should probably be able to see everybody. So. Well, I've um, got everybody now. Where's the PowerPoint? Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> maybe. Um, so maybe we need to do a whole webinar on Zoom training. Yeah. Let's. That yeah, wouldn't be bad. Yeah. Let, okay. So we're going to add that. This is one of the reasons <laughs> we wanted to have this yeah. conversation today. Because we can add that to our list. Um, yeah, one of our one of our national funders did that for mm -hmm. you know the whole world. Um, mm -hmm. I think we had three pages of people, um, and it was it. I mean, it made my head swim. It was so much information. Yeah, but I would yeah. like just basics. If we get we can we can try to put something together to do the basics of how to use Zoom for your boards. Then that's a uh, that'll be 
Someone that we worked with at Berea College put together some really helpful Zoom tip graphics by being on a call and then taking some screenshots and then using some arrows and sort of, kind of um, so that might help also with being able to describe where some icons are and how you can do some of these things. Mm -hmm. yeah. so I think yeah. We'll be doing this for a while. Right. And it makes Zoom so much more usable if you have some tricks and techniques. So, and like so. Sandy said, even if even once we're able to meet in person again, I think that Zoom yeah. is a good tool if you're not if you're traveling and you don't want people to have to travel for a meeting. So mm -hmm. yeah, I think it will be helpful for Okay, well, good. We had good conversation around that then. So if you've been able to put any questions that you have, any questions that you've brought today um, into the chat box, we could just go through those questions. Um, I actually have not seen, I see we have 10 chat things. I don't think anyone's input any questions yet. Okay. <laughs> so, um, oh good, and Jacqueline's taking notes, good. So, any, any questions that you have that you want to discuss today, the door is wide open. It can be questions that are related to the trainings that you think we might need to be doing, questions that are related to how your community is dealing with COVID-19. Just what is it that, um, that you all would like to talk about today at our virtual potluck? Hey, John and Melissa, I would love to know what you guys are doing for Kentucky Gives Day. Um, the college um, always does kind of a social media blitz. Um, I honestly have not been on social media at all today. And, well, you know, one of the disadvantages from working from home is that, you know, you're not seeing and hearing, um, you know, kind of water cooler conversations. And so normally I would, you know, be passing through the president's office on the way to the copier and hear them talking about what they're doing and the plans. And I haven't heard that. So, and I've not been on social media today, but in years past, um, we have put together a big social media blitz, lots of email distribution, you know, things of that fashion, you know, asking because, you know, as you probably know, the college does have a, um, a nonprofit uh, foundation. So, uh, they try to to raise money for that but again i've not been on social media. county community foundation doing anything for kentucky gives day melissa not that i'm aware of so personally <laughs> i'm responding to every affiliate or fund that we hold that sends me a, a request so First one i came from upper cumberland i saw that you put something out jerry and did it have um, the community foundation listed on there? Yes. So I, I saw yes. that came the, out uh, as far uh, as doing something individually. Yeah, yeah I, I think, yeah, we're, you know, we're just sending it out from the foundation, listing all the funds that are participating. Yeah. Uh, you know, and then some of the uh, board members, uh, I'm sending out a, a small email from the board member or to the board members and ask them to forward to their friends, you know, if they, if they, if they choose to. Um, Upper Cumberland, um, Randy did a really nice job on their message and Sandy forwarded it to me. Um, and so, you know, and then if, if they do that and everybody on the Upper Cumberland board then forwards it to all their contacts, it should, mm -hmm. you know, help a lot. And um, we had some glitches with a couple of links this morning. And um, I think Tanya's still working with the Kentucky Nonprofit Network. I, I think, think they, they got them going on either. Yeah. Did she get those? I think they got them fixed. Yeah, there's there, okay. for some reason there was not a donate. They had to verify the bank account or something for the new funds. But now I think they've got them fixed now. So. Terry, when you said you were responding to people, what did you mean? I mean, I'm making a donation to every personal appeal I get. You say that again. I'm making a donation for any personal appeal that I get from an affiliate, board member, or fund that we hold. 
you personally are or personally i personally making, am making a donation if i send you an email and say jerry how about giving some money to the floyd county foundation yep you're gonna do that. <laughs> wow Wow. Well, thank you, Jerry. I had no idea. I had no idea. Uh, I wanted to go back and tell you, we also on our social media, on our Facebook page on the Upper Cumberlands, uh, we posted a 30 second slideshow uh, with just trying to say, you know, this is who we are. This is who we serve. This is, you know, we, we raise money. We don't uh, make grants, you know, or we make grants. We don't. I mean, yeah. But anyhow, in trying to uh, provide for our board members any tool that would make it as easy as possible for them to spread the word. Mm -hmm. so, um, yeah, so if you, if John, you should write an appeal and attach the link for Floyd County or any of the funds. I'll give it, yeah, I'll give it to yeah, him. Kathy's yeah. gonna send one and, uh, and then get people to forward it to their contacts. Well, uh, you know, I think uh, Floyd County, I don't know about the others, we're probably one of the newer groups. I I still am a little unhappy with the way we, it does, that there's no donate button that's readily available on the Floyd County one, on our um, local one. Um, and uh, of course, I'm sure that it's true of others. We're on other nonprofit boards. There are other boards I've been on that I'm on especially KJC and the Kentucky Equal Justice Center started two or three week, days ago and have a big, I've done really well on Kentucky Gives Day a couple of times a year. Last night, the last email I sent probably to Kathy and our folks is what we were doing, whether we were doing anything on Kentucky Gives Day. I don't think we've really had a chance to make it a big deal. And I guess we did have that little fundraiser with Boyd Holbrook, right, Kathy? Did that must have raised two or three thousand dollars the videos we did? Oh yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it yeah, they did. Uh, we didn't have so, any kind of push for today. Okay. So Kathy, do you serve on the community foundation board or you support it as a support, foundation? Support just like the the Pike County and I did for Upper Cumberland there for a while, you know, kind of the liaison from the foundation to the affiliate. Okay, the liaison. Okay. Right, yeah. Well, I wasn't sure with you living there that you right. might want to have a bigger, you know, to have a, you know. Yeah. Bigger, so. Yeah. Yeah. Kathy, Kathy supports um, all but Perry County and Upper Cumberland. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's why we, it's uh, because of the pandemic, things kind of slowed down, but we're hoping to add an additional, um, Kathy lives in Floyd County, we're hoping to add an additional community engagement officer um, more towards the Laurel County region, Upper Cumberland region, somewhere in the Upper Cumberland region. Okay. Um, and I, I sent you an email to this effect, Jerry, but if you were interested in a summer intern, I might have a young Berea student uh, who could work virtually and fill that role for you for free uh, while you are uh, just, you know, getting through the pandemic uh, and uh, deciding on that. So um, you sent me an email about that, Sandy? Yeah, it's been a couple of weeks. It just dawned on me. I haven't talked to the young lady about it, but she was an intern for Kentucky Highlands last year, and she's just a she's a, a wonder girl. And she was going to spend the summer doing summer camp work, and I'm pretty sure that's been canceled. So I, before I reached out to her, I wanted to verify that you were um, interested in such a thing. So well, let me uh, let me go back and look for it, but um, okay. I might need you to. Well, it. I didn't include anything other than the, hey, would you like an intern this summer? I mean, that <laughs> yes, was like I got it. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, it's not like it's got it. Finding the email is going to be any more that I, you know, just shared with you. Yeah, so. that's exactly what it is. Hey, you want an intern? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, so I know somebody and might be, you know. I have to think about that. Uh, okay. Yeah. Well, let me know if you, you know. It, it so depends on, it's, it's even more complicated because it's like, does it take more capacity to, as much as we want to teach and learn and, you know, at this juncture, does it make you pull out your hair more yeah. or can, is it, yeah. So let, yeah, I, I agree with you totally. Cause I mean, that's the, that's the challenge of interns is that, you know, you often spend more time trying to keep them 
motivated or keep them doing something, you know, than it is. Um, you know, uh, I will tell you the young lady I have in mind though, uh, is it's about as self-motivated as anybody I've run across of her age group. So, um, we could, you know. we could bring her on with us and match her up with you, Sandy. And well, that's what I was, work yeah. for the Upper Cumberland, you know, that's what, Cumberland. yeah, let's yeah, talk. Exactly. Let's okay. Talk. We'll talk. Okay. Yeah. We'll talk. Okay. Yay! All right. Yay! <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> You know, that's a good question, though, in the bigger picture is how mm -hmm. could we make better use of interns and young people in our region? We have Pikeville, we have Berea, we have, Hazard, you know, all the community colleges. What could we do? What ways could we be more engaging with our, our students in the summer? And, um, you know, is there a way with the affiliate boards who do need support because they are all volunteer boards? Um, is there a way to think about ways that we could engage our uh, college or post-secondary students more in philanthropy over the summer? So um, one, my thought is from having two children currently in college is I know that Sandy just mentioned that this particular student from Berea could be an intern for free is that it's really good when things can be paid um, mm -hmm. because my kids are both having to pay a lot of expenses out of pocket right now um, at school and, and they really do look for the summers as an opportunity to, to uh, earn some money. Yeah. So, um, you know, I, and, and maybe there's a, a, a small budget or something that the foundations, each foundation might be able to, to uh, budget for. But, you know, I'd really like to find opportunities for paid internships. Um, and, and plus, I think the paid internship looks a little better on a resume as well. I, I didn't realize that. See, back in the old days, you know, nobody got paid for an internship. Right. I mean, I gave so many hours just to build my resume up. But that was back during the end of the baby boom when I was actually going to have to compete for a job, you know, right. and, and now it's gotten to where it's not as, uh, you know, it's almost like we're now competing for you to work for us, you know, and, um, and, and I mean, I, I get the idea that, um, you know, that a stipend is useful and, and so forth. It's just that, um, you know, the organizations that need them the most are often the ones least likely to be able to provide a stipend. Right. You're yep. totally right, Sandy. And I think that through Berea, um, they are, they offer students some stipends if they are having an unpaid internship so that they're still getting paid. But Melissa, that's a really good point that a lot of students aren't able to um, do that for free. Yeah, it's, things are different now and these kids are having to pay so much out of pocket. And, you know, I've got, uh, I've got four in my house right now, two that are mine and two are that are their significant others. And all four of them have got expenses um, that they personally are responsible for. And uh, they're looking for every opportunity to make every dime that they can. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, the, the problem is, is like, you know, some that might be very gifted towards internship and good productive work because they don't get paid, they're going to go out and mow grass and pull weeds and power wash driveways for the summer because they make, you know, so good money doing that. And so, yeah. you know, do I go and learn about nonprofit work or do I go, you know, make $400 for power washing a driveway? You know, well, it's so, no brainer. You make money. Yeah. Yeah, you know. it, it's, you know, they're directed more towards those kinds of efforts. Right. In yeah. the in the vein of that, and um, we actually have been doing some very early thought here at Brushy Fork about what we might do to connect younger leaders and older leaders in in this region in eastern Kentucky, and particularly in light of many nonprofit organizations who may have leaders who are, um, you know, getting older, maybe thinking about eventually transitioning and retiring, and they're not sure where to find that younger leadership to step into those roles. And so how do we create something that connects yeah. those people? Um, and that, again, that's just very early thinking that we're, we're doing right now, but I think hearing this conversation makes me think we may be on the right track for some things. So I well, should tell you that go ahead. 
go I'm ahead, Melissa. Sorry, sorry Sandy. I, I, I can tell you that in the academic world um, and, and with the state of Kentucky, there is a big push for what, you know, is called inter uh, apprenticeships. Mm -hmm. um, that's the new buzzword right now. Yeah. Um, and of course, you know, that's a different, it's different, but it's similar, you know. Mm -hmm. And if there was a way to find apprenticeship kind of positions where not only might they receive a small stipend, but you can turn that into some college credit, mm -hmm. um, that would be very helpful. And so um, just finding a way, because right now, you know, we, we're hitting up all of the manufacturing places and things like that. But what about the nonprofit world? What about mm -hmm. people who are going to be interested in public administration? What about people who are interested in, in becoming, you know, um, um, a director or, or a lead person in, in a nonprofit? So, you know, there are people out there that are seeking that kind of work, too, and, and maybe we join in in some fashion to find apprenticeship kind of positions um, and just kind of go along with the ride with what seems to be happening in Kentucky. Mm -hmm. Building on that, Melissa, if we were to go with the Service Year Alliance and, and try to connect in and get these and let them not be apprentice, but let them be VISTA volunteers, sure. then they yeah. would get that uh, credit. You know, and it wouldn't be that difficult for us. I know Berea is already, through Partners for Education, has already got a relationship with the Service Year Alliance. But if we were to expand that uh, and maybe uh, push it out a little deeper into Central, Central Appalachia. Um, the second thought that comes to mind is let us not forget that there are two groups of emerging leaders that if we wanted to add value to their acceptance into the leadership programs we could. One is the Leadership Kentucky Bright Scholars uh, that, uh, you know, uh, how about we do something that really gets them excited with a mix and mingle uh, with uh, young, you know, uh, uh, you know, you get the emerging under 40 leader meeting with the young, you know, in college leader, you know, mix and mingle. And then ARC has their leadership group and there's, uh, you know, I think there's eight of those in Eastern Kentucky. And again, that adds to the, um, I don't know, the how, notoriety, the, the uh, excitement of being a part of these leadership programs uh, to, uh, you know, especially if you're, you know, honored by organizations like Brushy Fork, as well as uh, maybe even a little, um, you know, social media slash, other media, um, you know, blitz. Uh -huh. So this is Emily, and um, with the apprenticeships, I'm actually working with SEDIC on doing, making those more, um, the ranges more, you know, so sort of like the nonprofit world. And we're also looking into um, tapping into the high school students. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So at HCTC, we were the first pilot in the state of Kentucky to offer um, high school apprenticeship programs. And we um, have currently we have got high school apprentices that are placed in healthcare. Um, and so that that's definitely something that is here in this area and that was funded through a Department of Education grant that came actually to the state of Kentucky and then the state of Kentucky chose Hazard Community and Technical College as their first pilot location to do that. And so there's a little bit of that work that's happening and I would be thrilled to find opportunities to build upon that. Mm -hmm. And so um, we're about 10 minutes from the end of our of our call time, so I just want to make folks aware of that, but um, this conversation that we just had had a lot of energy, it felt like, and so what if we wrap it up with just a quick question of what do you think is the role of the affiliate community foundations in continuing to think about the um, apprenticeship, service year alliance, what, whatever format, is there a role for the community foundations in that? Donna, a role for the affiliate or for the foundation or a role for whom? Um, a role for b both. How's that? I mean, both the affiliate community foundations or? Um, okay, or well, if I ruled the world, which is the way I format everything, but if I ruled the world, I would, out of my big list of every board member of every community affiliate, I would ask for volunteers to serve as a seven-member focus group to explore the issue and bring back a report. That'd be what, the way I'd do it. Good. 
No? Yay. <laughs> Jazz fingers. Woo! Jazz fingers. <laughs> yeah. Your soup. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, um, Sandy, who would be on the focus group? I was just wanting to be able to capture that effect. It'd be the volunteers. It would be, it would be a mass email to everybody who's serving on a board, okay, including the big board and all the affiliates, and just say an idea has emerged. We'd like to form a focus group on creating these uh, apprenticeships uh, to experience nonprofit world through foundations. Uh, and we are looking for a seven member focus group of volunteers who would like to virtually meet a couple of times and work out details on whether or not that's a good idea. That sounds like a really good idea to kind of be able to put together. Concept. And I wonder if um, you all would be able to maybe include some of those after that, maybe some potential like some college students that maybe would go through that to see what they would think about that design too. Yeah, I think the focus group really does probably need to get real and ask, uh, you know, uh, design their own, um, uh, what do you call it when you put together, I guess it's a focus group too, but you know, where you're actually interviewing those who might be interested to find out what it would take for them to actually, you know, do you have a product or do you not? Um, mm -hmm. Almost like a market study, but. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. Feasibility kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, well, I had no idea where that conversation was going to go. Mm. <laughs> and I think it was pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> so um, we wanted before we ended this webinar to kind of figure out if there are any new training needs, um, either from these conversations or from your other thoughts, um, you know, other things that have happened with, um, so any other ideas for webinars or meetings? Um, that have arisen from this conversation. It probably would be helpful to you all to know what our next couple of webinars we were looking at doing are gonna be. Um, we were going to, we're, we've been currently working on the one for, I think it's the 26th of May, um, that is gonna look at effective communication among team members and among board members. And so um, that one is gonna be much more interactive than our previous couple of webinars have been. Um, but we'll just look at some group norms for, uh, for that good communication. Um, and then after that, a month after that, we were going to have a webinar on running effective meetings. Um, and so I know that we're saying it would be helpful to have some good Zoom tips on um, how to run online meetings. The running effective meetings maybe could have that in there, um, or we could do a separate webinar for that. Um, later on, and we haven't plan actually planned some of these yet, but there will be webinars on fundraising and donor development. Um, mm -hmm. And then we also um, had said that we would, if a, an affiliate foundation, a community foundation wanted to have some planning time with us, then we would work with you to do some kind of local strategic visioning and planning and create a one page document that kind of expressed the plan that came out of that. So, really, because I thought that was, I thought that was what we were doing. I didn't know it was if we wanted it. Um, I thought that was, I mean, I thought that was the end result by the end of 2020 that we would have those moments with you. Um, we definitely want you to have those moments with us by the end of 2020. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, you know, we make the assumption that all the boards want that. So far, I haven't had anybody contact me to set up, you know, here's how we want to do that because we want to customize that and tailor it for each board as best we can. Okay. So I that's probably, just because, okay, that's just because we didn't realize that's right, that we needed, that to, we needed to pull the trigger. Okay. Okay. And I have not clearly, we haven't been clear about that then. So that tells okay. me that I will, I'll put together an email that explains what we expect. Um, okay. In terms that, of, of yeah. trying to get that we planning have a, underway. Yeah. We have another meeting uh, coming up in June. That's our next quarterly meeting. Uh, and we will, uh, that we can have that on the agenda, okay. uh, how we want to, how we want to do that. Yeah. yeah. Maybe, um, maybe either in the subject line or at the very top, Donna, put in this email requires a response. I will. Okay. I'll do that. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I just, I sometimes think I, for, I do, I forget that 
or try not to, but it's easy to forget that yeah. all these affiliate boards, they're all volunteers and are working Absolutely. on jobs. And mm -hmm. sometimes if it's not, you know, if it's not really clear, mm -hmm. I need you to respond to this. Yeah. Well, I mean, and it's, and we through. get so many emails, <laughs> so I completely understand. And our, our communication about this, we've been, we have been figuring out some of this as we go along. And so our communication has, has um, not probably been as, Clear well, and, you, you know, and you don't know, I mean, uh, you don't know who is working from home or who's been furloughed and right. decided furlough meant I don't have to look at email, you know, exactly. different like that. Exactly. so I mean, it's, you know, um, nothing about this year is, has been right. Um, right. Exactly. I, uh, hmm. I am really excited, though, about the webinars and the work that's coming from Brush Youth Work. So I hope uh, yeah. And, and like you were saying earlier to Sandy, I, I want each board to get as much out of it as possible. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's um, even if that means, you know, we keep you on longer or whatever we have to do. I think okay. it's important yeah. that, that we get the that sure. we have that resource. So, yeah, I was of the opinion that we were waiting until we got closer to the end of the webinars to do that kind of work. Yeah. So, um, Jerry, I know that as, as helping out the Perry County Community Foundation, if you would put that as an agenda item on our next, um, on our next meeting, uh, that way we can talk about that and, and make sure that the entire board knows and, 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 and it, it'll be on our calendar then, I guess, at that point, once we have a conversation about it. Uh oh, I just found out that Jerry supports Perry by doing their agenda. I bet she does the <laughs> minutes too. Guess what the Upper Cumberland's going to want? <laughs> Actually, Sandy, I have not ever done an agenda for them. Erica was doing the agenda for them. Okay. But Melissa will tell you that I barely got the information to them, much less an agenda. She did. So, have tell the truth, Melissa. <laughs> <laughs> during the yeah. meeting. I, uh, so far, and I even completely missed the April meeting and we had, to, we postponed it till May. So mm -hmm. I'm not that great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and man. Wanda's really good about doing the minutes. Yeah, Wanda's 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 yeah. Wanda does. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, you have to come in all, everybody has to good. figure out. Yeah. Um, It'll take it. Yeah, what my my huge big fantasy and vision is that we build all these endowments for local communities so that each community has their own full time staff person. Mm -hmm. We want that. That would be great. <laughs> yes. 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 Okay. See, all I right. Just, I, you know, I was looking for an endowment that we could actually generate our grants off of, and I didn't realize well, grant one would be to pay a salary. But you know, I, you know so. Right. Uh, yeah. 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 We want to give it the first. Yeah. So, so yeah, I, I just wanted to throw out one more thing, and that was our last uh, webinar uh, on the and. Um, we were, those of us who were on board talked about it afterwards and we're like, man, we wish that webinar had been available when we all got together at Cumberland Falls. Mm -hmm. And we were all sitting around the table trying to figure out what we needed to know about this organization without having to read the manual. Okay. And that, and so it was, you know, it was a bit of a, a review for those of us who've been doing it a couple of years. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, you know, uh, we just, I think it will, I think anytime you get a community that says we're thinking about becoming an affiliate, you need to have them in a room together and they need to watch that webinar. Okay. Uh, because uh, that is a great way to digest a lot of information out of that uh, manual and um, um, to be able to move forward. Um, it also reason was we great, recorded them. Yeah, yeah. It, it was also a great reminder to me that our officers are uh, supposed to be elected annually. Uh, we have not done that. Uh, we uh, and we are going to have to start talking to our board members. And uh, Emily, listen to this part. You know, uh, we're going to have to start preparing some people to step up and take some roles because we were thinking of it in terms of you know your board member. You could serve, you know, three years and then three more years and then three more years, but then you had to rotate off. And we were looking at that model for the officers, too. And uh, it's clearly noted in the manual that that's not the case. 
and we've not been preparing for that. Uh, so we're going to have to prepare for that because that's going to be a big deal. Uh, and if we can't find anyone in our group that's willing to step up and, and do that, uh, then, uh oh, you know, what happens to us, you know, so. And that is one of the reasons why that we wanted the Community Fashion uh, Foundation 101 because of the new board members that would come on to try to get them up to speed with the other ones because as new people come on you know they some of them they might not understand the the role that a community foundation can play in in their county or their region so mm -hmm. we thought that was really important and we, we we did realize that it was going to be an overview for some of the ones that had been on the board for a while but we still thought it was important to uh, to put that on one of the the videos so that we have that in our toolkit and people can go back and watch it often mm -hmm. as needed yeah. as an necessary yeah. And as Jacqueline just put in the chat, those recordings are available on the foundation's YouTube channel. And so, or we can, we can also make sure we resend links out for those to everybody. And I have now actually broken my promise and we're two minutes past one o'clock, but <laughs> you know, I don't know if folks are needing to leave, but um, if you do have other webinar ideas that have that come up, you know, um, email us. We can't promise that we can do a webinar on everything, but we can at least, explore that and you know try to try to meet the needs that the boards really have so okay. so that's good um, um you know one we need to have in there someplace i'm sorry for just keeping on talking okay. but i you know and that is we need to coordinate our effort in november or october and november between the foundation and the affiliates to be able to send out a coordinated re, uh, end of year giving response um and and we could do that together okay so that you know we can take advantage of the big list that resides in hazard with the little list we ha you know we need to do that together and that's going to take a coordinated effort it's not an affiliate doing it it's a all of us doing it uh, so that we can um you know um not so that we can appear to be very unified in our asking um, and uh, and try to take advantage of the year end uh, in a together way. So, and that might be a great webinar to have. Yeah, great. This is off the subject, but I wouldn't be interested in from Jerry um, in learning more about what the foundation's doing about reentry. I think it's really important uh, effort. And I don't know how much the foundation is going to do, but if you can send something out about that sometime soon, because many of us have reentry councils locally, and yeah. really it's a very important effort in Eastern Kentucky these days. So I, yeah. I thought I was glad to see you were going to try and do something with, I guess, some funding and some new. Yeah, um, we had a, I had a call about that yesterday, John. We do have a consultant working just on that, Amelia Kirby, and she is going to be um hopefully in the next week or so and if she if you don't hear from her i'd like to know she's supposed to be checking in with each of the affiliate boards or at least a board chair somebody one-on-one -on -one, to talk about um your sense of what it means to think about early release and stuff in your communities good bad or indifferent um you know what's the general feeling about that the reentry count there's two reentry councils that serve um most of our counties one in laurel i think sandy do you have a reentry council yeah i know that i know i don't know and then the one in floyd but neither one of them are doesn't seem to be there so we're talking about maybe the best thing we can do is shore up those reentry councils i don't know so there's a lot to be thought about in that regard, because I think local opinion is going to have a lot to do with it, I think. And there's there's a wide array of opinions about what that means and what it looks like and what we, you know, what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. So it's complicated. And that might even be another area where we want to get a, a working group or a task force that covers all the affiliates. Mm -hmm. You know, like this seven person intern, you know, sort of conversation, pick mm -hmm. a person or two out of each of the affiliates and have a focus group. 
Mm -hmm. I like Sandy's idea on that. So yes, um, and and the best way to even talk about it to all the affiliate boards because the pandemic again really put a damper on our one-to-one -one contact with everybody about that. Mm -hmm. So we will. Thank you, John. Thank you. Well, it sounds to me like the um, the idea of the putting together those committees to think about things is a satisfying morsel or leftover that you're taking from our potluck today <laughs> to, to continue the potluck theme. Your puns are adorable, Donna. Thank you. <laughs> so that's how we want, to, we want to kind of close out is is what is your what is your leftover that you're taking home from this potluck is there anything that anybody wants to share we don't all have to share because we are running out of time or have run out of time but i want to give you the opportunity if you say i really this is something i'm taking from today um, please feel free to share that i just i enjoy being able to meet all the other affiliate uh you know and i'm sorry that whatever happened it you know um you know, I would almost suggest to you that in between every webinar was a potluck, you know, uh, uh, and uh, trying to increase and expand our uh, exposure to one another. Um, and uh, um, yeah, so, but that's my morsel. I enjoy meeting, uh, you know, I know John, I know Melissa, I know them very well, you know, uh, and of course I've, you know, uh, Emily is my gal. Uh, but, uh, but I just, you know, it's, it's a pleasure to see, uh, to hear what other affiliates are doing and what their struggles are. Great. Well, the discussion with the, about the apprenticeship was easy. Well, it was interesting and I think it's something to think about. I, I agree with Sandy. I really enjoy, um, this kind of, even if it's just a handful, you know, mm -hmm. we still have four counties represented here, I think three or four counties. I, it's, it's enlightening to me to hear everybody's frustrations, everybody's ideas. Um, you know, I'm walking out of here with two or three new things on my list that I hopefully can, can get to or that with you guys and that's, I, I agree with Sandy. I think the more interaction, even if it's small starting out, mm -hmm. this is the kind of network building we need to do. Mm -hmm. And as far as Zoom goes, we're covering a big swath of yes. territory. No, even if we aren't having a pandemic, this mm -hmm. is probably the way that we're yep, going to be yeah. able to really network people together. So yeah. I'm really curious and interested in that. I love the idea of having the potluck in between each webinar. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and I made a note to you all about that. If we can pull that off, let's yeah. let's figure mm -hmm. out how to make that happen. We'll look. We'll look at how we can fit that into yeah, our if, work. If you've got the capacity, yeah. and we mm -hmm. can engage you to do it, that'd be great. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. We ran a little bit over. We talked about nine minutes, but we did get started late, so we'll <laughs> a little bit late. But um, yeah. bye bye. Glad, glad this was helpful. And we did record it, so share it with your friends. Let them know how great it was. <laughs> okay. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye. Okay.